Hey, this is uh, Frank Valente in Northern California. Welcome to my video blog. And today I'm going to talk about, you're hearing on the news, the shifty market. Talk about the stats, what it means if you're a buyer or a seller. And then maybe go into the whys behind why this is happening. Hey, this is uh, Frank Valente with uh, EXP in Northern California. And I'm gonna do a market update. This is for today, November 16th. And we're gonna talk about the market in Placer, Sacramento, and El Dorado County. So if you were, if I was out showing homes today and I had, and I wanted to look how many homes are available. Right now, today, we have 3,000, three, under 4,000 homes available in Placer, South Colorado County. Pretty, still a pretty low number of available homes. What about sold homes? In the last 30 days, we've sold 1,428 homes in these three counties, okay? And if I do the math, I'm gonna give you a number called an absorption rate, and this works out to be about 2.6 month supply. What's that number mean? 2.6 month supply. What that would mean if no other homes came on the market and we're just looking at the resale homes, what's in the, our inventory, we're going to be out of homes in 2.6 months. That's still a seller's market. Less than a year ago, we were almost at zero. Um, about a month ago, we were up to three. Start, so it's starting to open up a little bit. So now what's that doing to pricing? We'll get into, I'll go into more depth later. But in the last six months though, prices are down 9%. Okay, that's a pretty good chunk to be down 9% in six months. And that still seems maybe contradictory to me when you say, well, Frank, we're in the seller's market. And we're still, it's still a relatively low inventory of homes. So, but if I go back two years ago, we're still up 22%. So if you bought a home two years ago, we're still up 22%, even with this decline. And if I go back four years ago, we're still up 28%. So, you know, maybe contradictory. Again, it's a seller's market based on how many homes you have available. But in the last six months, is if I looked at closed sales price, what homes have sold for, we're starting to see that decline. But again, if I go back historically, we're uh, two years and four years, we're still up. Very significant, and the, even these numbers are still high for a two-year period. Say over two years, that's still ten percent a year. It's very hard when you think about it for, say, a buyer for the you know, as most people income go up twenty-two percent, you know, consistently in two years. Every two years, are they able to save more money for down payment? So even these rates overall historically are pretty unsustainable. So now let me. Uh, clean up the board and I'm going to break it down and to get into some of the whys and what this means if you're a buyer or you're a seller. Okay, it gave me a chance to clean up the board and I, I talked a lot about statistics on our market. I want to get to, you know, if you're a buyer or a seller, what this means, what the shifting market means to you and maybe give you some of the why. So a couple of things that you know, could cover a couple of points. One, jobs. Has, is the job, the economy, has that had an effect on our market? And I'm looking at jobs because it takes people with jobs to be able to buy homes, qualify for mortgages. And even going back prior to the pandemic years, people that have been in jobs and occupations and businesses that have allowed them to buy homes, and maybe some people can disagree with me, always were able to continue to buy homes. So I'm not putting a lot of blame there. Pandemic. Absolutely. Did that have an effect, especially with the supply chain and maybe almost creating a migration? But I'm talking about supply chain. In our region, we have a lot of new home construction that has effect on the market. Supply chain issues in the new home industry slowed their ability to deliver homes, created more demand, caused prices to go up. 
right? That's, we're starting to come out of that. Also, there was a migration. You know, people were working from home more. So even in, say, in our local region here in, in the Sacramento region, people said, hey, Frank, I need a house with another room because we're working from home. Or, you know, I'm spending a lot of time at home now. I like to have a home with a pool. Or maybe people from, say, the San Francisco Bay Area or San Jose were now, they're living in a very, not a lot of uh, gross living area, realize, oh my God, I could move an hour and a half away and I could triple my square footage and I'm working from home, I might as well move and, and make that move. So that was, and I, we're coming out of this, but interest rates, and that's to me been the biggest culprit. So let's use an example, I got some numbers up here. So last December, this is last December, less than a year ago, if a buyer wanted to have a $3,500 a month payment, they were able to get actually less than a 3%, they could buy a $700,000 home. Now today, we're still in less than a year, the interest rates have climbed to knocking on 7%. If a buyer still wanted to keep their payment at 3,500 with these interest rates, so instead of buying a, a $700,000 home, they can only buy a $425,000 home. And you could take this effect that the interest rates have had on affordability at every price range. So even though we still have a strong number of buyers for homes at every price point, there's gonna, right now there's less buyers than there was a year ago. So I, I always like to talk about absorption rates. So this is kind of my speedometer, kind of like a tachometer, or a, I'll think about it, like a tachometer. So if we're at, and we're still just, we're still right around, we're bouncing around here right now, this is today. We're still in what I'm calling a seller's market because if it's less than a three month supply of homes, it's still a seller's market. Okay, but January of this year, we were down here back in January. Okay, so this increase, that's pretty significant in absorption rate in less than a year. Okay, is that going to keep going? No one knows because this is the big culprit, okay? Now, significance of this. Back in, say, 2006, seven, eight, we got up to a 12-month supply of homes. As a matter of fact, in some, some markets, we were past that. We were at an extreme. So, you know, about 12 years ago, we were at an extreme seller's market, a buyer's market, and, and we started this year at an extreme seller's market, and now we're starting to move away from that, okay? And so this is definitely a sign of a shift because we've been, we were bouncing over here for the last 12 years, okay? And now we've seen this shift happen in the last six, seven months, and that's why we're calling the shifty market. Think of the, uh, I got this from Gary Keller, think of the real estate market as a freight train. It takes a lot of energy to get that train going and accelerating. And then when it, it, you, you watch a train start to break, I mean, it's shaking, it's rattling, a lot of energy to stop it, and then it's going to slow down. So it's not like the stock market at all. It's, you know, we, we're on very steady trajectories. So um, this is where we're at. I would still call it a seller's market. But what makes it perplexing is we've seen, because it's happened so fast, you know, going from zero to a three month supply, we've seen that effect on pricing. So if you got any questions on the market for your area, you know, certainly if you're like, say, living in Granite Bay, that's gonna be a slightly different market than being up in Auburn in a rural area or being in Lincoln in a, a suburban area or down Elk Grove. But overall, the trends are the same. If you have any questions on real estate, please call and text and have a great day. Bye-bye.